All right, guys, let me start by welcoming you. Obviously, really excited for game week. Finally, it's here. Uh, we can all take a deep sigh, mm -hmm. a deep, big breath, and, and say, wow, we all should be grateful uh, for the opportunity for what's presented ahead of us, a great opponent coming to the Liberty Bowl this Saturday in Arkansas State, quite excited. Um, our young men, our student athletes cannot wait. Uh, you guys know the time, the effort, and the preparation that it takes to get ready for a season. And this off season has been one like any other. Um, and our guys continue to keep the, the right mindset and the right focus uh, moving forward with all of our attention and detail to a wonderful opponent on Saturday. Let me also start with this press conference by saying that, you know, we cannot discuss um, COVID related issues. That's something that our football program will keep in house. And then also as far as opt out uh, the process of that, any player that's chosen to opt out until the paperwork is signed or they come public, uh, we will not discuss that either. And that will be our policy uh, throughout the rest of the football season. Again, also in relation to uh, COVID illness and how that relates to our team uh, each and every week. So that being said, I'd like to open up to any questions. All right, Terry Davis has the first question. How you doing coach? Good Terry, how are you? I know uh, you said preseason coming into season, the most important part it will be depth. So how is the help of the team going into your first game this, this week? Yeah, we feel pretty healthy. I think, as I've mentioned all offseason, I'm really excited about the depth of our defense. I think it's the best depth we've had now going on my fifth year here. Um, I think we've got a good rotation of the defensive line. Uh, and then our linebackers, as you guys know, that's a veteran group and really like the depth there. Uh, those guys move along. And then the back end, right, to be able to have you know, guys like TJ Carter, Jacoby Francis, uh, a rotational group at safety. Uh, we like that group. And I think that's, you know, the depth on our – Defense side of the ball is exactly where we want it to be. Obviously, uh, time will tell come this Saturday. And then offensively, you know, we, we like our receiving core. We got a deep backfield. Um, you know, we know Brady White's our quarterback, but uh, we, we like all those guys in that room as well. The offensive line, as we know, is just we continue to find depth. I think every team in the country would say, hey, I'd love to have more depth at the offensive line. And that'll always be the case, especially with wearing my old hat as an O-line coach. And then, you know, like our tight end. So, you know, really, really pleased with the depth on the defense. I think offensively, um, you know, we still got some work to do there. And I think we'll be able to see some of these young men step up uh, week in and week out. And that's the other thing is, you know, what kind of shape are we in? How are we going to be? You know, you talk to coaches all throughout the country and said, man, we're not close to the same shape we've been. So depth will be important, especially early in the season. All right, Cassie. Happy game week, Coach. Uh, just looking at the depth chart, Rodriguez Clark, uh, your first running back now. What gives you the confidence in him to go out there and be your featured back? Yeah, Drew Clark's a young man that uh, works hard, done the hard way. You know, and people always said, who did I think would be a, a surprise, you know, even a couple months ago. And I think Drew Clark's a guy that we have great faith in that can carry the rock. He's great in protections. He's got great hands, can be used in, in passing concepts as well. So, uh, a smart, hardworking, intelligent young man that will uh, it's excited to carry the rock. And we've got full faith in him. I know our, our, our team does, our his teammates do, and the coaching staff does. So I expect big things out of number two this year and uh, really excited to watch him run on Saturday. All right, Stephen Johnson. Hey, Coach, how's it going? Good, Stephen. How are you? Hey, I'm doing okay. Um, you said earlier this has kind of been an off-season off unlike any other. So just for you personally, now that we're finally here on game, we – What's just the feeling being like for you these last couple of days? Yeah, to say that it, there's still not a lot of stuff going on is a, a stretch of the imagination. There's still a lot of things uh, occurring every day outside of our control. But like I told our team, control what we can control, focus on what we can focus on. And, you know, I'm, our, I'm at my happiest and at my best in between those white lines. Um, but there is a sense of, okay, we've made it here. Obviously, we got to continue to stay healthy and sound. Uh, the rest of this week so we can get to Saturday. There's a lot of protocol still in place, right, with more testing that's got to occur. Um, obviously, we want Arkansas State to be healthy and well also so we can uh, play this game on Saturday night in front of a great national TV audience. But there's a lot of excitement, as you guys know, that uh, I'm not one to hide my emotions and I'll, I'll be smiling the rest of the week and just in order to get to Saturday. And we, guess what? We know we got a tough task at hand and a wonderful opponent in Arkansas State. But, you know, game week, it's here. Let's roll. All right, Evan Barnes. Ryan, uh, two questions. Um, so just to clarify what you said earlier, you guys will not be this, this, by not discussing anything COVID, does that mean there will be no updates as far as, you know, 
testing results leading into game week. Is that what you mean? And second, um, you mentioned Arkansas State obviously having, you know, a lot of depth on their side. Um, what kind of challenges does that present for you guys, you know, also having the depth, trying to, you know, match a team that obviously has a lot of offense? Yeah, Evan, yeah, I just think it's best uh, to keep, unless our COVID numbers get out of control, to keep those uh, results to ourselves. Um, it, I think it's just for the, the personal factor of, you know, keeping things hidden. But as long as we feel safe and comfortable playing the game, uh, that's something we'll keep within our program. And we've talked to our, a lot of our student athletes about that. You know, we share with them and they obviously know what's occurring and what's going on. And then looking at the, the depth of Arkansas State, you're exactly right. I mean, they are a team that returns almost their entire offense, right? I mean, uh, they got playmakers at wide receivers, they're tight ends, they love their running backs. I mean, they got two quarterbacks that can play for most teams in the country. And then that offensive line to return all five starters up front on their offensive line. And I tell you what, and then their defense, right? They've got a, a good rotation there and they've got some depth. I know they're excited about their, a lot of their individuals uh, that they have there. Um, you know, Forrest Morrell's an all-conference, you know, nose guard that's coming back off an injury. Um, they got some big bodies in there. And uh, look, they're going to present some challenges. They're very well coached. They do a great job on special teams as well. So we know going into this, it, it's going to be a four-quarter battle, uh, but we're excited for the challenge and uh, can't wait to get to Saturday. All right, Anthony Robinson. I think you're muted. There Am I go. muted now? Can you hear me now? Good. Okay. Gotcha. Coach, how's it going? Good, man. How are you? Doing pretty good. Uh, you just mentioned that uh, Rodriguez Clark would be your uh, next man up as far as running back. Oh, uh, when Patrick Taylor went out last season, that made a way for Kenneth Gainwell to shine, and people were kind of like, he snuck up on us. Who's your sleeper guy uh, at the running back position this year that may catch us by surprise? Uh, that's a great question. You know, you look at some of those guys that are in that room, we feel really comfortable. Uh, with everybody that's in there. You know, Coach Jones does a great job coaching and teaching those guys. Uh, so we do get a, a full rotation of guys in there. And you get guys like Kyler Watkins, uh, who, who's got some dynamic speed and can do some different things. You know, Markavius Weaver's a name that uh, people don't talk about enough that helps us out quite a bit on special teams, but wouldn't be shocked to see him get some, some reps in there. So really excited about all those guys. Um, you know, I think from top to bottom in that room, uh, like I said, it's a well-coached room. I give Coach Jones a lot of credit. You know, obviously, we've been known as, you know, running back you for a long time. Um, and, you know, obviously, credit goes back to D'Angelo Williams and even before him. But I like that room. And they got the right mindset, and they're excited. One more question for you. Uh, the importance of and how excited are you that your opening game is going to be on ESPN this year? Yeah, I, I tell our guys, I said, look, there may be – 4,200 fans in the stands, friends and family, right? We may be able to look up there and recognize most of the people in there. Um, but think about this. We have that, what a wonderful opportunity that's presented for us, right? To be on a national stage. I mean, I'm not just talking about millions. I, I truly believe it's going to be, you know, one of the most watched games in a long time, simply because people are hungry to watch uh, two great opponents go, right? Arkansas State has a great fan base and a great following. Obviously, we know we've got the best fans in the country here at Memphis, and I think the nation wants to come out and watch some good football, you know, tune in um, Saturday night, seven o'clock. So I know our guys do it and some of these coaches will downplay it, but you know, I think it's important to think about all these people we're playing for. Um, so I even mentioned that to them this week, right? Every time you say, Hey, maybe I'd like to pick up a video game controller or maybe I'd rather, you know, get on the phone. Maybe I should watch a little bit more phone. Maybe I should take some more notes, make sure I should, you know, doing the things I need to in order to be prepared because literally, all eyes will be on them Saturday night. All right, Mike Sadie. Morning, Coach. How you doing? Good, Mike. How are you? Good. Um, you've told us all along in your as you prepare for things, you have a plan, and then you have another plan, and then you have another plan. Some get thrown away. A lot get thrown away. As you prepared for this season opener, obviously, I know you're not going to talk specifics, but a lot of your game plan was based on the play of one great player. How difficult is it now, a handful of days beforehand? to kind of have to scrap that and kind of go in a different direction. Maybe not scrap it all because you got a lot of talented players, but your game plan does change a little bit. How do you deal with that just a few days before kickoff? I think, Mike, what makes us, you know, all a bit more comforting is we've got wonderful coaches uh, that understand, you know, how to game plan and to take advantage of our personnel. You're right. We do have great personnel. I mean, 
I, I like our entire offense. And um, I think we got a lot of guys that are excited to step in and, and take up major roles and continue, or, you know, to develop and do what we're supposed to do offensively, right? We have a history of good offense here. Um, we can't take it for granted and just assume it's going to happen. So, you know, we're in there to game planning right now, trying to figure out, you know, better ways to attack a great Arkansas State defense uh, that does present some issues to us. And, um, you know, that's my job as the head coach is to make sure I put our guys in the best position to have success on the field. All right, Christian Fowler. Can you hear me? All right, Coach, you've talked a lot about the defense throughout the offseason, and we know you have a lot of leaders returning. You've got a staff that's drawn a lot of praise, led by Mike McIntyre. How excited are you to see the product that that defensive staff puts on the field on Saturday? I can't wait. You know, I mean, I'm so used to during most of my time, you know, having my back into the, the field when the defense is out on the, the field, uh, coach up the offensive line, talk to the offensive players. So I can't wait to watch them play. I know our defense players are excited. Um, that they appreciate and they, I think they like this new scheme. I think they've adjusted well. You're exactly right. We do have some defensive uh, veterans and some leaders. And I know they're, you know, they're fired up about it. I think they're, it's one of those things, especially since it's been, you know, since the Cotton Bowl, since they've been on display, I think a lot of them still have a bad taste in their mouth, which is great. I want them to be, um, have a chip on their shoulder and hungry to go out there and try to prove themselves. And I think that's, you know, not only as a defensive unit, but a lot of those individuals as well are excited to get back out there. All right, Clayton. Clayton, you're muted. There we go. Um, hey, Coach. Uh, you know, obviously, some recent adversity and, you know, long-term adversity that you guys have been facing over the last few months. Just, you know, is it just like a, a get me to, to, like, September 5th at this point? or? <laughs> You know, it, there, there has been adversity. Um, that's the name of the game in college football. I think, you know, programs throughout the country are, are facing some adversity. And I'll kind of share with you guys the story of, you know, really, I believe the year was 2010, right? Minnesota Vikings. Um, you know, we were just came off an FC championship game versus the Saints. Brett Favre came back for one last hurrah. Uh, all was well in, in Minnesota and Minneapolis. We we're excited about the season. We go into the season. Uh, things start off a little rough. Uh, they fire the head coach 10 games into the season, and then Leslie Frazier takes over. Well, within the time frame, you want to talk about some adversity, the Metrodome collapsed, all right? So for the first time, our, our stadium collapsed uh, just prior to us playing a game. So we had to play a home game versus the Giants in Detroit. Then we go play the Eagles, and uh, the worst blizzard in Philadelphia history occurs. Then they move the game to a Monday night. Well, the second worst blizzard in Philadelphia occurs. We play a Tuesday night game. So talk about some adversity there. Then we go play at the University of Minnesota's field because our Metrodome had been collapsed because of snow. And we go play, and the, the field is frozen over. And uh, we get beat on a T twist game, and Brett Favre gets knocked out because the ground, at that time, they didn't have heating coils. So we, our quarterback gets knocked down the last play. Brett Favre's history he was getting knocked out on the back of the gopher field. Um, so constant adversity throughout that year. And so I just kind of look back and say, this is part of this profession. Uh, we've dealt with it before. There's always going to be new and challenges. But like I said, our young men, our student athletes are strong minded and steadfast. So I appreciate their approach. I'm probably the one that gets more rattled than anybody. Uh, but I'm proud of the way our guys have stayed focused and uh, just really looking forward to the task at hand. All right, Stephen. Coach, you mentioned they have two quarterbacks. I'm not sure um, how different their styles are, but are you guys kind of preparing to maybe face two quarterbacks, and what type of challenges that kind of present for this defense? Yeah, we are, because both have played significant time, right? They had their guy that was their quarterback for most of the season, and obviously the one that led them, you know, in, into their bowl game. And so they're both uh, different types of quarterbacks. So I think as a defense, we've got to be prepared to make sure we're – there for both, you know, both challenges. I mean, they're one can, they can both throw and they're both athletic, but they, they present different unique skill sets um, that, you know, as a defense staff, especially with the first time implementing the scheme, uh, we've got to be ready for two quarterbacks. And I think it would be wise of us to make sure we've kind of repped and talked about and, and watched film and showed our players the different film of each one of them. All right, Terry Davis. Yeah, another defensive question. We, we know we're going to get out the offense. So with this defense, would you try to do more of like a press coverage or because since we've never seen this defense before, or it's going to be more of an attacking type defense? 
I think you're going to see a little bit of everything, Terry. I'm not going to give away our secrets, but uh, we got some surprises for Arkansas State for sure. I think it's, um, you know, like I said, we got great defensive staff. I know that they'll be uh, prepared and they got a bunch of different ideas and answers uh, for how they want to. But again, with that being said, Arkansas State is a high powered offense. They play fast, uh, they've had a lot of success. Coach Blake Anderson and his offensive staff, I mean, they're, they're phenomenal. I mean, I give them a ton of credit because they've, they've competed for championships every year. Um, and it's, you know, it, it's, we are going to have our hands full. But I've got full faith in our defensive staff to get the job done. And like I said, our guys, we believe in them. And I, I think we're going to see some neat things. You know, I look forward to, like I said, watching them out there on the field and, and watch them perform because it, it is a new scheme. Um, but we've got some different wrinkles that I think that will uh, assist us on Saturday. All right, Mark Giannato. Hey, Ryan. Um, not, not to say you weren't prepared for your first game as head coach back in the Cotton Bowl, but everything you've had to go through since that game, how has it already changed you as a head coach, like just having gone through all the experiences you've gone through before this second game as head coach? Yeah. <laughs> you know, to think the cotton ball, playing Penn State in the cotton ball is my first game would have been stressful. I think I've added some more gray hair. So uh, that that's certainly has aged me quite a bit uh, these last few months, just with everything that's been going on. But again, I think the biggest thing is I have to have a positive mindset. You know, I talk to the players constantly about the blinders and the focus. Well, it's just as much for me, right? Sometimes that's self-motivation, self-talk saying, okay, Hey, there's all this other stuff going on. Every day I've got to wake up and, and lead a group, right? Not just players, but also coaches and our support staff and, and let them know, hey, everything's going to be okay. Another challenge, you know, like Terry said, hey, take another plan, rip it up and throw it away and, and we're ready for the next day and what other challenges may present. And look, there's no such thing as being in the clear, right? We still got to kick that ball off and get there. So uh, there's constantly things to deal with, but that's my job is to try to, you know, make sure those, those fires get put out with ease and that uh, we can, you know, stay focused on Arkansas State and ourselves improving this week and having a great week of practice and the guys handling their academics. But learned a lot, and I'm sure we'll continue to. And I think that goes for, you know, Mark, for every head coach in the country because, like I mentioned to you guys four months ago, there's no handbook for this. I couldn't find it. You know, I couldn't go on Amazon or Google, you know, pandemic football coach and, uh, and have many answers. So. We're all learning. Maybe, you know, 30 years from now, I can sit back and it'll be, you know, chapter 12 through 14 is the, the 2020 football season, and we'll go from there. Just to follow, just to follow up real quick, um, you were talking about the defense. I know you knew you, you got to know Mike McIntyre during the hiring process, but now that you've seen him in action, you've been around him for six months, what have been your what, – what's the biggest impression you've had of, of him as your defensive coordinator so far? Yeah, you know, I knew that Mac, Coach Mack was a, uh, you know, people-oriented, relationship-based person, um, but he truly cares. And, you know, for a guy that's had his type of success, um, you know, from being a head coach to being a coordinator, uh, he's had success at every level. You know, he coached in the NFL. He's a guy that comes in and, you you know, people said, well, are you worried about hiring a guy with former head coaching experience that's done this and that? And, you know, because of an ego, he is has no ego. He's 100% supportive. Uh, he works his tail off in recruiting. Uh, he's been all in on everything we want to do. So not that I ever worried about that, but it's just been even more impressive how much he cares, how much he loves being here at Memphis. And, and that's exciting to see. And I think it resonates a lot very well with our players. Thanks. Jeff Calkins. Uh, it, it, it has been a long time since you accepted your dream job standing up in front of us. Um, can you put into words what has happened since then you could not have imagined it like this and what will you be thinking when you run through that tiger head I presume the tiger head's still going to be up um will it be pride that the way you've negotiated it relief um I, and then I have a follow-up if I could sure you know it, this is still my dream job and nothing has changed then you know it's uh every step along the way from the, the cotton bowl to you know all season recruiting to hiring a staff to not having spring practice, to dealing with the, the things in society that we need to continue to address, to getting, you know, dealing with COVID, to all sorts of other issues. It's, uh, they're challenges, but I knew there'd be challenges of taking this head coaching job. And I think, like I said before, I think uh, people throughout our country, uh, college football head coaches are dealing with different challenges. And I know I got to take them head on and, and full speed ahead. So 
it's been a whirlwind. And I think I used that term, <laughs> you know, the week leading up to taking the job, you know, everyone said, how's it been? I said, you know, even up to the cotton bowl, but um, it has been, but you know, I've got to maintain my composure and, you know, keep that positive mindset, Jeff. So that the players understand that, Hey, we're going to support them. We're going to be just fine uh, coming up Saturday. Now, uh, I do think, you know, running out of that tunnel, um, may or may not be a tiger head to be determined. I'll let you guys see that on Saturday. And we got some <laughs> surprises. Um, you, maybe I'll be riding on the back of Tom three, but, uh, that being said, well, I think that'll get some not good attention on ESPN, but, uh, no, there will be a sense of pride. Um, the relief, there's no such thing as relief in this profession. Maybe I'll have relief 20 years from now sitting on a beach and, and chairs in you somewhere, but, uh, you know, it, it's going to be a sense of pride. I'm proud of the way these young men have approached it. It certainly hasn't been easy on them. Like I said, they've got the right mindset. They've the ones who have been steadfast and, um, and strong-minded. So credit and kudos to them. And so I think it would just be so excited to finally be back in our home stadium, even though it'll look different uh, than the last time we were able to play in front of our fans. But a sense of pride, okay, here we go. And, and guess what? Get our mind right for a great opponent. Is there a, um, I know your connection to the program was one of the reasons you got the job and was sort of one of your main qualifications for the job was the way you already had relationships formed. Given the what, what has happened, both with the protests and the COVID, how important has the fact that you had that relationship been to negotiating these few months? Jeff, I think it's been very important. I think we're seeing throughout our country that um, there are been issues that have risen at every college program. I mean, really, I think every single college football program has, has dealt with something. Head coaches are dealing with things of different nature, different variety, um, all throughout our country. And I think we can be able to see that the last few months. So the biggest thing for our players is, you know, like I said, I don't need them all to like me, but if they respect and trust me, because um, I think the one thing is the trust has been built over the years, those guys that know me, and even those newcomers will continue to understand that. But the respect there, knowing that, look, my number one job is to serve them and do everything that, you know, suits them and their best interest in us as a program. So I think it's been huge uh, with those aspects and everything that's occurring that, that that relationship has been there. And I need to continue to work to build that. Okay, Cassie. Coach, do you get to have family there watching you coach your first game at the Liberty Bowl? I do. Um, you know, it, it's, it's exciting, right? I'm so grateful for so many people in my family that have poured in over the years. I mean, this is now 22 years, Cassie. I'm probably more years coaching than how old you are. Um, so it's made me, you know, a, a lot of, a lot of hard work, a lot of efforts gone into this. So I'll be very excited. In fact, my, uh, my parents will be there, which will be mean a lot to me. And I've got, uh, other family coming. So I get emotional much talking about because it it's been a long time coming and, I think people that sit back and say, man, it, it has been a crazy three, four, five months. You know, it's, it's a lot of invested, but again, um, it's all about the players and excited, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited to have family there watching us. All right. Anthony Robinson. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, first thing, uh, you mentioned a few minutes ago uh, that you've learned a lot between the cotton ball game and now. So I was wondering what, what is the most significant thing or what sticks out in your mind about what you learned? And then I have one more question after that. You know, Anthony, I think that's a, you know, a unique way to look at it. how I've learned, you know, not only just as a head football coach dealing with the program, but as a person, I've learned that I need to continue to listen more, right? I don't have all the answers. And I think not just listening to our staff, but listening to our players. And yeah, just because I've got the relationship there, and just because I feel like the players trust me and, and vice versa, um, it's allowed me, I've need to, I've grown as a man. Um, and, you know, as a 40 year old, I've continued to realize I've got to improve myself and, and, and listen to our players and how can I make myself a better person and my, by myself making myself a better person with understanding what our players are going through, it will make our program a better program. And then in turn, hopefully make society a little bit better. So, you know, Anthony, that's the one thing is I, I, I've tried to improve myself as a person. Um, and part of that's by listening to our players and seeing what I can do um, to, to help better their lives, to better our society altogether. And I've, that's one of those things I've got every single day until the day they bury me. I've got to continue to do a better job with 
And, um, but that's probably been the biggest thing. It's not necessarily, Hey, play Colin or how to schedule meals and all that fun stuff. It's just growing as a man and continue to learn to listen. Uh, by listening to the players, is there one thing that you hear from them, uh, like more than like from more than one person uh, that they are all saying? And at the end of last season, there was a little uncertainty about whether your uh, quarterback and the top receiver were going to be coming back. How much work have they put in since the end of last season, and how explosive do you expect that duo to be on the field this season? You know, let me start with your first question, Anthony, is, you know, I think that they've all had similar concerns, similar things that they've wanted to discuss. Again, a lot of those conversations stay within house, but um, the biggest thing is they just want to know that we support them, that we care for them, that especially me as the head coach, uh, that we have their back and are willing to listen. I think just having those conversations um, have helped. We're certainly not where we need to be and we need to, these things need to be ongoing. And that's my job is it, it just can't be a, a message once a week. It's got to be an everyday deal. And, you know, what can we do to continue to implement and make things better for them and, and for our city and for, you know, our world as a whole. And then referring to, you know, Brady White and Monty Coxie, obviously the dynamic duo, excited to watch them. Uh, they have put in a lot of work. If anybody knows Brady White, man, that, I think he has a bed hidden up here somewhere at uh, South Campus because he, he, he constantly is up here working and, you know, DeMonte Cox, he knows that uh, he's expecting big things this season. There's a reason why they both came back um, and couldn't be happier. That's what, you know, gives me a sense of peace and eases my mind because those are two veteran guys that do it the right way that uh, look forward to a lot of successful games this year with. All right, Mike Sadie. Coach, before I ask my question, is it Coxy or Coxy? Because he tells us grandma calls him Coxy and you guys call him Coxy. We need to know. Coxy, Coxy. There you go. That's a great question. So his freshman year was Coxy. Then it, we, he told us, you know, the same story about grandma calling him Coxy. And uh, I think it's just gone with it. You know, I've got a little bit of that Southern twang, but I think so that New Orleans part of it is Coxy. Um, but I, I call him Coxy. He usually responds, but um, or just Monte. So he's been, you know, the nice thing is he, he's good with whatever. And he, he, there's no disrespect how you say it. Um, he's just, you know, hopefully, we're, you, hopefully you're, you're yelling his name quite a bit on the, the PA system and we get to say it many times. Uh, so this, this, I think it doesn't matter how we say it, as long as it ends with a touchdown, I think we'll all be happy and have big smiles on our face. Okay. So there's no wrong answer, but what I want to ask you about is, um, can you, can you, um, and these are two quick questions. Can you take us through the protocols this week? I know you're not going to give away COVID numbers, but when it comes to kickoff between now and then, how often will your team be tested? We heard the AAC a month ago say, you know, at least 72 hours before kickoff. What's this week look like in terms of COVID protocols? Yeah, Mike, so we tested the entire uh, program organization, um, over 220 plus people yesterday, okay? So we did that yesterday, and then we will test again due to conference rules uh, Wednesday. And so that's part of that, that. You talked about the 72 hours. That's something that the conference did uh, and implemented. And then you guys have already seen the protocols that say you now, again, need to test after the game. All right. So within, I believe it's, you know, I don't want to give you the hour wrong, but I believe it's within 48 hours after a game, you have to test again. And so we, the plan is to test. Obviously, we just tested yesterday. We're testing again on Wednesday. And then we'll be testing again on Sunday. So, um, you know, we're doing everything we can to make sure that our guys feel safe and sound and that our opponents do and that we're doing it the right way. But that's the entire bubble. Um, that goes from, you know, Jen Hanna and Tammy DeGroff all the way to the, the police. I mean, everybody that's around our program is going to you know, make sure that we're, we're on the right track. And the other last thing I wanted to ask you was, you know, you told us at the beginning of this whole thing that if a player wound up wanting to opt out, you would support that decision. Um, there was a lot of backlash from Tiger fans when news came out yesterday. What was your take on that as the coach of these players that have to make a difficult decision in terms of, you know, let's look at this not strictly on the football field if a, if a player decides he doesn't want to play this year? Yeah, I've had, uh, you know, many candid conversations with student athletes here. and We've talked about it. And as you guys know, and at least as our players know, I'm pretty straightforward about things and I will support them. Um, they have my, they may have my support if they choose to opt out. I always talk to them about the different situations, but 
uh, for health and safety reasons um, or whatever they may choose their reasons to be opting out, I will support them. Um, and I, I think that's the right thing to do. And I, I, I don't know what each and every individual is going through. Um, I try to have those conversations, but if any player does choose to, I support it. And the nice thing is it's a, it's not that we forget about them, but it's an X man up mentality. And our, I think our current roster understands the same. All right, we're down to the final three questions, Coach. Evan Barnes. All right, Ryan. Um, there's a name on the depth chart that's a little unfamiliar to us who has been around the team. Uh, John Cartwright at DN. Um, what, what can you tell us kind of about him and just kind of how his camp has been, just, you know, seeing his growth? Yeah, Evan John's a kind of a lunch pail type of guy. You're going to see him walk out on the field and you're not going to say, oh, who's that massive defensive end? He's a uh, – He's a hardworking, hard-nosed type of guy um, that brings it down and down out. I do think he's a three-down defensive lineman that can play, you know, on first and second down, but also be there um, on third down as a pass rusher. Uh, he's very stout in the run game. He's strong, uh, high-motor type of guy. He's brought a lot to our defensive line room, and I think you guys know good and well, I think if any time we can add depth uh, to, the, to the line, to the trenches, offense and defensive line, we'll try to do so. But... He's been an exciting addition. Coach Pope, I know, is fired up to have him in there, and he's fit in quite nicely. All right, Christian. Coach, as a former offensive line coach, we know that you're going to have your hand in that position group, and there's been a couple changes on the depth chart. Uh, Manny and Ronald Lopez switching over to center, but the one to me that's more interesting is Dylan Parham moving the guard to tackle. And I think some people, if you, if you know the game of football, you could tell his athletic ability that he could kick out to tackle. What's that transition been like for him throughout camp? Well, Christian, you hit it right on the head. I mean, most of the time people are going to move tackles into guard, right? Because they say he's not athletic enough to play tackle, so let's move him inside and they don't have to do as much. But uh, Dylan Parham, you guys got to remember, he came to us as a tight end. Uh, they said he couldn't play tight end, and then they moved him to the line. They said he couldn't play defensive line. And so I, I stood up on top of the table and said, I'll take him. And, you know, obviously a productive two year starter for us at left guard. Um, and I just think, you know, being able to put a, 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 an athlete who's strong, um, Dylan's weighing about almost 290 pounds now and to have him at right tackle. You guys know I don't necessarily need the, you know, obviously Obina's a nice six seven tackle, but we've had a lot of success with those 6'2", 6'3", 6'4", tackles here. And uh, Dylan kind of fits that mold. He's athletic, he's strong, he's tough. Uh, his technique continues to improve every day. So really excited to watch him out there on the edge. All right, and then lastly, Steven Johnson. Coach, I saw, I saw on the depth chart that Taj kind of seemed like he'll be st uh, the start at one of those receivers positions. Um, we kind of talked earlier about how intense that competition was all throughout the preseason. What did he kind of do or kind of just show you guys to kind of earn that uh, first nod for Saturday? Steven, Taj has showed up day in and day out. He's been one of the hardest working individuals uh, throughout the time since we've been back, even in January, February. He kind of sat there and said, man, this young man's going to make a difference. We always knew he had blaze and speed. Um, he's dynamic with the ball in his hands. You know, if you go back and watch his high school film, and he's matured greatly. Uh, he understands our route concepts and what we want to do in the passing game. Uh, he gets it. He does it the right way. And so, you know, he certainly has earned the right to play quite a bit for us. We're excited. You know, he's a name that, as you guys over the last few months have watched, say, who's somebody that's coming on nicely. And, and Taj has certainly been one of those guys. And really can't wait to watch him out there. All right. Thanks, Coach, for your time. Thank you, guys. Y'all be safe and well. Look forward to seeing y'all soon. Take care. Jen, when were credentials ready this week or later this week? Uh, they'll be ready soon-ish. Tammy's working on them. She can answer that question better than I Got to ask. Got to ask. <laughs> Thanks for everything. Hey, Tammy. Tammy, just a follow-up okay. for Jen. Um, I noticed on your email today, it said the elevators are between